Okay, uh, I guess I did not make it clear yesterday what I was doing when I took this piece and so, so carefully had it upside down and then sprayed like this and then I so, so carefully turned it over and was, was really pleased with the fact that I didn't get any paint on the deck and then what did I do? I just sprayed all over the place anyway and got, got paint on it. Uh, this, this piece and the other little piece was only to test to see if that system would work. Okay, uh, but because I'm going to be painting this deck anyway, I wasn't too worried about if I got paint, you know, the, the gray paint on it. It was, it was just a test to see if this larger piece that had the deck tan was going to be affected. And as it turned out, it didn't. So that was, it was a little bit confusing. I'm sorry about that. There I go apologizing again. Anyway, now I'm going to relate to you a little story. Uh, it's kind of funny and it's, it's related to the model ship. Now one of the viewers is also building a model ship and he is building a, a 172 scale a Chinese old sailing ship. He's building a Chinese junk. So, okay, I, yesterday I watched his, his latest upload to see how he's coming along and and he's busy meticulously tying a whole bunch of little knots on the sail because, <clears throat> excuse me, because it's a sailing ship. And uh, after the, the video is over, I make a little comment and so the little comment was something like, uh, your, your Chinese junk is coming along really nice. Uh, did you use crazy glue on all, all the knots? Because I think he calls it crazy glue, not CA glue. And uh, then uh, uh, I said, uh, not on my friend, not on. Okay, so I typed that all out and I'm thinking afterwards, just to be funny, I should translate it into Chinese because it's a it's a Chinese junk. So I translated everything into Chinese and then put the Chinese script there in the comment. And I was looking at it and I'm thinking, okay, Mark's going to have to take this now and he's going to have to he's going to have to copy paste it into translator. If I know how to do that, I'm sure he does too. So I'm thinking, I wonder, does it translate? exactly word for word. You know, it should. If I put it in one way and it comes out, if I put the same thing in and try and translate it back, it should be exactly the same, right? No. Anyway, <laughs> I did. I, I pasted the Chinese script into the translator and this is what came out. Sorry, Mark. I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> Anyway, I, well, I thought it was funny. It, it, you know, it doesn't take much to amuse me. Anyway, let's see if we can't just, uh, you know, get these little parts stuck on here. Uh, obviously, the the pegs are a little bit too big to fit in the hole, or maybe maybe I've got too much paint in the little holes. I don't know, but we'll get it figured out yet. Now I can do one of two things here. I can either pare down the little pegs that are on these parts to fit these these holes here, or I can enlarge the hole. And I'm thinking at this point it's probably easier to enlarge the hole than it is to try and pare down the uh, these pegs. So I'll just sort of try and get a measurement here. Okay, it looks like about 29. Let's check with the other one here. I have to go real easy, otherwise I'm going to just squash it and then I won't get a true reading. Yeah, it's about, they're about 29 thousandths of an inch. Um, so, uh, I should be able to find a bit here that's approximately that size, maybe a little bigger, and then just carefully enlarge the holes here. Now, <clears throat> one of the viewers was asking me, uh, what was it that was in the pressure cooker yesterday? Well, um, 
remind me to show you before the end of today's episode. Okay, some of these may be the same. Now these are, this one here, it's obviously way too small. Whoops. It's okay, I saw where it went. But something like this might be the right size. Now, let's, let's just see if we do enlarge this just a little bit, what is going to happen here. Okay, this one might be the right size. So let's just try that and see if we can make the holes in the sides of the bulkhead that size right there. Um, I'm sort of thinking as I'm talking here. Anyway, Now, it has been my experience that if I, I, I call it choking up on the end of the, on the end of the bit, and, and just tighten it there like that, it doesn't have to be real tight either. Okay, there, there is less chance of breaking the bit off if there's a very short piece sticking out. And I don't, I only have to go in, not even a millimeter, so, you know, that's more than enough. Okay, before I do these other four holes, I'm going to just try that now. Okay, I've got a different tweezer here. Now, what happens is when I use my rubber tweezer, the uh, XF paint has a tendency to um, act like sandpaper, and the rubber comes off. Now, I, I do believe we're basically in here. Whoa. I'd apologize for getting my fingers in your way. You know, I, I had it. Why didn't I just leave well enough alone? Okay, I'll get it and we'll start again. Okay, this is the underside right here. When anybody's going to be viewing this this thing, it's going to be from looking from this way down. So I'm going to try and get my glue on the underside so if there ends up being a little blob of it, it will almost look like it is supposed to be there at the bracket. Now, I haven't uh, tried it on one of these yet. Oh, by the way, this is the, this is the same uh, nozzle, you might say, that we started out with. I thought I'd be replacing these things like every other day, but... Okay, now I'm going to let that cure, and then we'll do the other end. The heat from my hand is warming up the container and it's, even though I'm not squeezing it, it's oozing out on me here. Oh, that's too much. Okay. I don't know if I made it better or worse. 
One thing's for sure, I'm going to have to paint over that. Well, I was going to do touch-ups anyway. Okay, I do believe we've got the right combination here. In other words, we're drilling the right size hole. And uh, being as that there's a whole bunch of these little holes to drill, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and Oh, I was reading on the uh, Google News this morning. You know how it is if you're interested in anything, somehow Google picks up on it and they, every time something new comes out, they're going to, you know, tell you about it. And I think it falls under the category of what will be of interest to you. And uh, they, they told me that uh, Sony is coming out with a new camera similar to my Nikon that I'm using right now. Of course, it will be Sony. It will be a mirrorless, but it will be uh, it will be able to shoot 8K uh, 60 frames per second. Now, to me, that would be worth moving up to. Just, just a thought. I'm just thinking out loud here. 8K 60. That would be, that'd be pretty sweet. Okay. Now, is this going to fit? Okay, so the peg there and the peg there goes in those holes that we drilled out. I know it looks like there's pegs out on the ends, but that's that's just brackets. There's, there's no pegs involved there. Okay, once again, I'm going to have to reposition myself here so that I can get those in and then we'll move in a little closer. Okay, I've discovered something here, and that is that the pegs on the larger booms are slightly larger in diameter. And yes, I was able to get the peg in the hole, but it's it's basically sort of a pressure fit, which maybe ha has benefits all of its own. Now, I was going to apply some more glue here, but I'm thinking that maybe what I should be doing is turning this so that the the th the thing is kind of down, you know, like like this. And that way, the the glue will sort of have a tendency; gravity will just take it down into the right place. So I'm I'm just going to reposition here. got to admit, this is turning out to be a little bit more difficult than I thought it was going to be. We are now on the other side. already got the short one on. And it's just the two medium sized ones. Now when I checked the monitor it looked like I may not have got very much on this first one here. Let's give it try and give it just a little bit more. Okay, that should do it. Now this last one fell into place pretty good. Okay, I think I got them all. Now when the light is reflected just right, you can really see where the CA glue is and where it isn't. And, um, yeah, now, you know, sort of like now you see it, now you don't. It just depends on the light. Um, now, most of the time, a person would never have the light reflected at that angle, so you wouldn't, you wouldn't really notice it. 
but uh, I'm thinking I should take a, a little brush and see if maybe I can't just cover that over with the flat gray and um, just to sort of experiment. Uh, uh, one of the viewers, his name is Vic, and he suggested that perhaps I dry brush stuff like that. Uh, and that way you're not really seeing the, uh, you know, the paint that you brush on will blend a little better with the paint that was sprayed on. So, so maybe we'll just give that a quick try here. Yeah. Well, here we go. I realize this isn't exactly dry brushing, but... No, that sure isn't dry brushing, is it, Ron? But I think once that dries, It'll probably blend in pretty good. And we'll lose the shine. Gotta be careful not to, to get it on the on the uh deck town. Oh, I did. Got to come in at a steeper angle. Some people are really good at this. Okay, just let me look up into my monitor now. Well, we did get rid of quite a bit of the shine. Maybe I can flash between before and after. Let that dry a little bit. Okay, I just took these three uh, sealers, or canning jars, or whatever you call them wherever you live. They're uh, one liter size, they're like quart jars. I took them out of the fridge just a few minutes ago. I put them in the, in the fridge about uh, uh, first thing this morning. They had been sitting out on my kitchen counter all night. Now, about the pressure cooker. Um, somebody brought me over some uh, uh, beef that had been slow smoked in a, in a slow smoker and uh, so it, it was actually it was brisket and uh, and, it, and it was delicious but you know I wasn't very far into it I'd only had a couple of mouthfuls and I realized oh my goodness there's a lot of fat in this and 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 I know that you can't tell by looking at me and probably nobody has noticed this, but I'm, I'm a little bit overweight. So I'm thinking to myself, I don't want the, uh, uh, the, the, the all this extra fat. What am I going to do about it? You know, and this, it was, the meat was delicious. So I thought, well, I could probably put it in the microwave and sort of cook it out that way. And, and I've known from past experience that you can take fat meat, and if you boil it, the, the, uh, the, the uh, grease or the fat will, will come to the top, and you'll be left with the fat on the top. Now, now this right here is solidified fat. This is broth. What I did was after I uh, pureed it in the, oh, by the way, I pureed everything in the blender. 
Uh, I, now, this is just a test. I didn't do it with, with all of the brisket that was given me, but I, I, probably about half of it, maybe not quite. I, uh, I pureed it in, in the blender, and then I cooked it in the pressure cooker for 99 minutes. Now, why 99? Because that's uh, as, as long as it'll cook without having to reset it. So I, I let it boil for 99 minutes under pressure. This is all broth. There's, there's a little bit of fat in this one here from maybe about here up, okay? This is, this is broth, and then down here is pureed meat. This is broth, and the rest is pureed meat. Now on this one here, you can see a little bit of fat floating around on the top, okay? Now that can all be easily scooped off. I think the reason that it's kind of orange color instead of white is because I added some, some uh, uh, barbecue sauce to it to give it flavor. Now my thinking is that, that something like this is going to be absolutely fantastic for when I cook rice. And I love rice. I like it plain. I like it any old way at all. But I think that if I use this, uh, you know, in, in, in to cook the rice, it's going to be, you know, really, really good. And anyway, the idea is I can, I can take this, scoop this fat off. I imagine if I was to take the lid off, it, you know, it's all sealed, so it'll, it'll keep. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm rambling on and on and on here. Anyway, that's what was in the pressure cooker yesterday. Uh, so for those of you who wondered, well, that's what I was doing. I was uh, trying to s separate the fat from the broth. I think I did a pretty good job. Okay, now, there's not a whole lot left to do in step nine. We just have to put life rafts on and the paraffin on each side and they plug into the appropriate holes. Um, okay, the uh, paraffin goes here and here. Probably can't see that you're too far away. Anyway, in tomorrow's episode, we'll move in nice and close and uh, we'll be doing that. I think that's it for today though, folks. So thanks for watching, and all being well, we will see you tomorrow.